is temporary. It may last for a minute or an hour or a day or even a year. But eventually it will subside and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. Listen to me, I'm telling you as I leave, I'm telling you as I leave, I was homeless for two and a half years. And the problem with most of you, you never felt no pain before, y'all spoiled. Y'all spoiled, some of y'all spoiled, just bottom line. Your parents have done everything for you. You never had to do nothing for yourself, you're spoiled. We're gonna keep it real tonight. Some of you are spoiled brats. Every time you ever got in trouble, somebody in your house got you out of it. Every time you've done something you're not supposed to do, people say, Eric, your mother's a tyrant. You're right. She kicked me out. You're right. She's mean, but she developed a man because she put me out there and said, you're going to have to grow up. And some of you have never learned to grow up. And so every time something get hard, you quit, you call mama. I dare you to take a little pain. So the question is, what are you going to do with what you have? I'm not talking about how much you have. Some of you are business majors, some of you are theologians, nurses, sociologists, some of you have money, some of you have patience, some of you have kindness, some of you have love, some of you have the gift of long suffering, whatever it is, whatever your gift is, what are you going to do with what you have? All right, now here's my last point about failure. Sometimes it's the best way to figure out where you're going. You, know, you have to sit and ask yourself, what, what is truly going to get you up in the morning, what's going to keep you up at night. And um, you know, when you find what that answer is, you stay true to that. You know, I've, I've built a brand for the last 20 some years, personal brand, which is great. But that is not where our focus is going to be for the next 50 years. It's what we are doing now. Are we taking a big risk? Yeah. But I think that if we focus on one thing and do that one thing exceptionally well, you won't fail at that one thing. So sometimes you gotta put the other stuff to bed and focus on what you believe is, is, um, is the core of the company. And that always starts from what you love to do the most. As a competitor, uh, if you're trying to do something meaningful, if you don't have the mindset that you're the best ever, you failed already. So if you don't have the mindset that you are the best reporter ever, then you already failed. And that's been my mindset since I can remember. That will be my mindset as long as I can remember anything, that I am the best ever at what I do. And every day that I step on the basketball floor, I will strive to be that. But my mindset will always be as such as I am the best to do what I do. And that will give me a shot at being the best. And the fear of success. What if they do and I can't handle it? The other thing is that most people, ladies and gentlemen, they get comfortable. They stop growing, they stop working on themselves, they stop stretching, they stop pushing themselves, and they end up becoming very cynical about life, and they throw in the towel on themselves, and on their families, and on their dreams. And the other thing is that most people don't feel worthy. What I'm doing now, I could have been doing years ago, but because I did not have a college education, because I didn't believe in myself, because I allowed other people's opinion of me to control my destiny, I didn't act on my ideas. So I applaud you for your dreaming, for your running towards your dream. I applaud you for believing in yourself because that's what life is about, stretching and challenging, looking for ways that you can begin to improve yourself. And ladies and gentlemen, as a result, of stretching out, of acting on my dream, and I don't know what that dream is for you, I can tell you that it's possible. No one could have convinced me that after just over six years, I will have my own book entitled Live Your Dreams. Just over six years, I will have five specials on public television. Just over six years, I've done motivational speaking for AT&T, Procter & Gamble, McDonald's Corporation, Xerox, IBM, just over six years. I will now have my own talk show that will premiere on Monday, Labor Day. I'm saying to you, your dream is possible. I want you to think about what level you want. Are you giving 90, 80, 70? Listen to what I'm saying for a minute. And most of y'all know me, you know me from where? Like, where would you know me from? Social media, where would you know me from? 
Say it again. Social media. Yep, I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. Watch this. I get 120. So I just got up eight years ago. I'm sorry, 12 years ago, just started getting online. It was a recession at the time. And I saw what was going on in America. I'm from Detroit. GM Chrysler Ford went down. People started going to the casinos, shooting themselves, killing themselves. I was like, I got a gift. I'm just going to get online and kill it. Every Monday, I would get up. Thank God it's Monday. Kill it. Nike never sponsored me. Adidas never sponsored me. Under Armour never sponsored me. I get up every Monday and get a world or something. Then it got crazy. I start meeting people and people be like, yo, ET, what up? Thank God it's money. I'm like, ooh, they feeling this. So then I start doing it every day. And then I start realizing cats is really feeling this. And I started doing it three times a day. You wake up and get three videos from me. You don't pay a dime for it. That's 120. Ain't nobody paying me, but I'm giving it out. Year after year after year. Boom, commercials. Year after year. Meek like E, I want to put you on my album. Year after year after year. I'm uh, international. Year after year after year. I'm putting in that work and I wake up one day. And what number am I as a speaker? Am I number 10 in the world? And my number five in the world, just take a guess what number you think I am. Number one in the world. I passed Tony Robbins, Les Brown, Zig Ziglar. Nobody paid me to do this. I just got up and gave 120%. And when you give 120, that's what happened. You become number one in the world. I want to ask you a question, seriously. What percentage?